the drug is called power. It's on the streets. So that's something that you can actually understand, you know, but the fact that it has this supernatural quality to it and a great question when you promote, like if, you know, if you had a chance to have superpowers for five minutes, what would your superpowers be? This new thing on the street called power, which has just arrived, which is this pill that uh, allows people to have superpowers, which is, um, I suppose, a really cool and fun thing. And yet, when you look at it from the point of view of a narcotics detective, could be a really scary thing. Power is a drug that heightens, think, who you are innately inside. And once you get the drug in your system, it elevates that. When Biggie takes the pill, he grows and grows and grows and becomes this real uh, imposing figure. That's all that he always wanted. That's his desire. Well, I play uh, Detective Frank Shaver, NOPD, and uh, he's sort of well, he's a narcotics detective, and he's looking into this new thing on the street called power. In the action movies, where you see um, a girl with a, a, a type of professional guy who's good with guns and, and saving, you don't really see African-American girls be the ones saved or the ones helping in that whole process. So I think Robin fits in in a very... Uh, unique position because she is a, a, six, a 16 year old girl who is not only saved by art sometimes, but she saves art and she saves Frank a lot of the movie. You know, they don't want her around, they push her away and she's, she's still going, she keeps going. You never, you can't hold her down. Biggie to me is a, is a real fun part to play because it, it almost feels like driving like a very powerful sports car that goes from zero to 100 miles an hour in five seconds. That's what sort of like happens to, to Biggie. He goes through a very intense uh, physical and emotional transformation in a very short period of time. What is great is that they can, they can watch each other's back. They've done it before, you know, so th they had their own, um, they had their own uh, like system, you know? And it, you know, it didn't bother you. It was really, it was really like, man, you know, they would, they would talk over things. So by the time they got to me, you know, they already had, you know, sort of, uh, you know, whatever decision that they were going to make, you know, they did it with themselves. So it was never any like, you know, no bickering or anything like that. And it was, it's great to have that youth. You know, when you see most directors, if you think about most directors, their best films are their first three or four. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so being able to be with these guys when they're, you know, still thirsty for it, you know, hungry to make it right. Uh, it was dope. And it was a cool contrast, you know, because uh, Real had this light. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, come on. And then Henry would go, hmm, we can, but... And so that sort of beautiful uh, tandem sort of kept us in the middle of the road. It's fun making a, a relatively big scale action movie with guys, two guys who are pretty firmly grounded in, in a more sort of artful, creative, short film kind of uh, mentality. I have not worked with two directors before, but working with Henry and Rel is uh, really interesting. They have a they have a great um, uh, like uh, like balance. They they dance well too. It's like a dance, and they are often on the same page, but they add different steps to it. But it never feels out of whack. My first meeting with uh, the directors uh, Henry and Rel were I mean it felt like I already knew them for a long time. It was instant connection. Uh, they're just really easy going. We talked a lot about the part and they were, they seemed to be very open to anything I had to say and they made me feel very, very comfortable. So it was, it was really a, a no brainer. Dominique, man, is a light. She's gonna be a force. 
because she was the backbone of this movie. Everything was sort of resting on her, resting on, you know, how she reacted. Even some of the the uh, the elements, like being in the rain, we had to do this rain sequence where, you know, she was, I mean, almost getting drowned, but to see how her strength and, and, uh, and then just, you know, just the acting chops, the rapping chops, uh, she had, she, she had a lot on her plate and she, she cleared it all. And it was the other side of her as well. Like once the cams were off and we were sitting and she was telling us about her, uh, you know, her spoken word and we got a chance to watch all of this beautiful raw talent, man. It was like, man, you're going to be killing it for a long time. And, you know, you see her coming, you know what I'm saying? You see the deuces and everything else that she does. I mean, the deuce, not deuces. But uh, she's she's on her way, man, to be to being a serious force in this business. Don't be surprised if you see that lady on stage, that little girl on stage, saying, "I'd like to thank the Academy." Dominique brings an energy to the set that nobody else has, and an authenticity to the character. She really researched it. She really spent time with. Uh, uh, local kids from New Orleans and really tried to nail the subtleties of the dialect and um, really tr trained to be a rapper and uh, she just brings that every day to the movie and she's got a real she and she and Jamie have a very special chemistry she and Joe have a, have a, a different but just as good chemistry and it's really fun to watch they're all just like playing off each other and if there whenever there's a scene just between Jamie and Jamie and Dom or Dom and Joe like you know it's gonna be good I think the machine gun Kelly scene was, was probably the, the one and at that point I was running you know it, it, they wanted me to do this 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 stunt where I have to I just literally got to run through a door and the uh, the the guy with the steady cam is run, is moving backwards. Man, he, as I'm running, he bumps the door, and as I'm rolling through, the door swings this way, and I catch that thing right there, gack. You know, so it was some real, it was some real, uh, real emotions on there, uh, and it took us a minute to really get that whole scene like that, because I think I, I think I had to go get checked and everything like that too after that. There exists a phenomenon called super steam heat, where if uh, steam like comes out of your pores when you're sweating was superheated to such an extent, it could spontaneously combust. Movie science, yes, but enough for us to latch onto and build mythology, build close-ups, uh, and then ultimately a, f a five minute sequence where Machine Gun Kelly and a stuntman are essentially really on fire in a real location for five minutes. One of the first things we said to Ivan was, why does CG fire always look bad? And why does it look fake? And why can I tell the difference between real fire and CG fire when CG is so sophisticated? You know, and he said, it's very simple. It's lighting. And it's almost impossible to replicate the, ef the effect that fire has on an environment, the lighting effect. And it's even harder to do that when the source of that lighting is supposed to be a character in the movie. So that, that led us to a very elaborate process for shooting uh, Machine Gun Kelly, the man on fire. This isn't like over the top. It's sort of like, uh, it's personal because it's not wearing capes and, and things like that that you normally would see in a, in a like a, you know, a, a big, you know, superhero film. It seems like you can actually, you know, you can actually touch this. Like when people watch this, they're going to be like, man, they're going to be thinking like, I can hear the conversation. What would you be, you know, for five minutes? Uh, you know, super power. I can hear the whole family going over, you know, y'all mess around, be the Incredibles. It's going to be exhilarating. The action is really creative. Um, there's superpowers in it, but they're unlike any kind of superpowers that you've seen before. It's just a really cool sideways take into that genre. Um, it's Jamie Foxx, who's I think one of our generation's great entertainers. I think the movie is going to be way funnier uh, than it is on paper. I think the Jamie is just, is a you know he's a comedian so he brings that to to um art and 
Frank is, uh, he's very, well, Joe is very fun and, and warm, but like he brings a, a edge to Frank that we don't have. So I feel like he's, in some ways, he's going to be edgier than the art character. It's a very unusual film. It's like, it has this, uh, has this really kind of deep, authentic character story at the heart of it, and it also has these totally insane action sequences. And, um, you know, there's a 12-foot man and a burning man and, and an invisible man and all this weird what? stuff. Yeah. But it's grounded. But it's grounded. But it's a nice, it's a nice cold action picture. Yeah. With, with, with heart. You got Jamie Foxx at the center of this thing. It's like you can't help but be, but be funny and human.